What's up YouTube? It is your boy JB and we are here today with a lot of videos today. So the first one we're going to do is going to be the 2021 BET Award that aired last night on BET. We're going to talk about it so we will we will go in order. I think we'll do the perform no, we'll talk about Taraji, the host Taraji. Then we'll go into the awards that they presented last night. And then we'll talk about the performances and then We'll end with talking about the tribute that they did to DMX, as well as we'll talk about Queen Latifah and her Lifetime Achievement Award that she got. Much, much deserved. Much, much deserved for Queen Latifah. So yeah, you guys. So before we get into that, um, if you guys are watching this video or any other video on the channel, and you're not already subscribed to the channel, then do me a favor. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell button. And like the video, you guys. So with that all being said, with further ado, Without further ado, let's go ahead and just talk about the 2021 BET Awards. All right, you guys. So let's talk about Taraji as the host. So has Taraji ever hosted the BET Awards before? That I couldn't remember if Taraji has ever hosted the BET Awards before. But suffice it to say, Taraji, um... Some of her little skits that she did were not that funny to me. I will keep that honest with you guys. Some of the skits weren't that funny to me. I did like, you know, and her now every look that she had, I loved all her looks. The one look I was looking at her, I'm like, is that when she um was, you know, supposed to be Erica Badu? I was like, is that really Badu? I kept looking for the longest time. I'm like, oh, that is Taraji. The one where she did S H E when she's supposed to be her. Love that one. Um, Tina Turner, the one where she was Tina Turner. I love that. But overall, I mean, like I said, it wasn't some of the comedy. I was lost on it. But overall, I think Taraji did a, a phenomenal job hosting this year's BT Awards. So, unlike last year, this BT Awards, it was all in person, no virtual. They didn't really show this, you know, they didn't really show the audience that much is what I noticed in this award show. But when they did show the audience, I liked how they had it set up. You know, you had, so you had, I like, it, it wasn't like, you know, a normal BET Awards where you have everybody in the crowd just in the same, you know, in rows together. They had it spaced out and whatnot. It was amazing. And guys, for the first time in a long time, I actually watched the pre-show. The pre-show definitely wasn't the biggest fan of the pre-show just don't keep that real with you but the actual but to, like i said taraji hosting it she did a great job um let me know in the comment section i'm probably gonna look it up to see if taraji taraji has ever hosted the bt awards because i'm really trying to think out of all the years of the bt awards i don't believe taraji's ever hosted i don't believe taraji's ever hosted Has Taraji ever hosted the BET Awards? Because I feel like if Taraji would have hosted the BET Awards, it wouldn't have been at the height of Empire, but I don't remember her hosting it at the height of Empire. I do remember Anthony Anderson, and I remember Anthony Anderson and um, um, Tracy hosting it, I believe. Hmm. Let me know in the comment section, but like I said, I'll probably look it up, so I'll, I'll know before you guys even tell me. But, uh, yeah. Let's go ahead and just talk about the performances next. All right, you guys. So the performances. The show opened up with Lil Baby and Kirk Franklin. I would have never put Lil Baby and Kirk Franklin together for a collaboration. But overall, the song was... I mean, I enjoyed the song. I, I like the song. I will say Kirk Franklin... He was on that stage. He was out dancing his 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 uh his people. Kirk was Kirk was turned up. Kirk was on it. I, I you know I can't say anything bad about it. The perform it was good. I actually believe I have some of these like I was using um Shazam because some of these some of these artists I don't some of these artists I didn't even know who well let's see who. I mean, I knew all the artists, but some of the songs, I just did not know who they were. So I was just like, okay. So yeah, we're going to have to use Shazam. I, I think I used Shazam last year. Like, I used Shazam for one song, but it, it could not tell me what the song was, which we'll talk about it. 
I think it's just because it was so low. But Kirk Franklin, he was the first one to come out. Him and the little baby, they performed. So then next, we had the Migos, they performed. Oh, and also the song that Kirk Franklin and the little baby did was called We Win. So then next was Migos. They performed um, Straighten and Type Shit. <coughs> when it comes to the Migos, I mean, they are... Their music is one way. Like, like I mean, one song that I listen to with, is, is um, with Mustard and Migos, um, Pure, um, Pure Water. I listen to that, and I saw them on stage performing that, and they don't give anything, but that song gives you, it gives you so much, it gives you a lot to, you know, be hype about, be, be you know, lit about, but when you get Migos on stage... Migos is dead. It's just like they just sitting there. <laughs> I'm like, honestly, because my best friend, it was a few years ago. I think it was like 2017. She wanted to go to this outdoor concert for the Migos. I said, absolutely not. She like, Jarrah, why? I was like, first of all, it's outside and it's in the summer. It's hot. <coughs> then I said, secondly, when it comes to Migos, they don't give you shit. Excuse me, y'all. I didn't mean to burp in y'all's face. When it comes to Migos, Migos just does not give, for me, they don't give that good of a performance. So I'm not going to pay to watch the Migos, period, point blank. So then when I saw the song Type Shit, I was like, oh, is that featuring Cardi B? I was like, okay, so that means Cardi is obviously there. So they performed the song, for, they performed the song, and then when it comes, to, I, I had never heard the song. So and when it came to Cardi's part, I was like, I looked at, you know, I said, okay. <coughs> Here come Cardi. So I saw Cardi walk out and I looked at the dress that she had on and the dress was open around her stomach and I was like, wait a minute, she's pregnant. Like we people have been speculating about that for a while if Cardi B was pregnant. Well, she confirmed that baby number two is on the way with Offset. You know, maybe he's learned his ways about, you know, maybe Offset has learned from his, you know, his, you know, his cheating and his flandering and maybe he's, you know, doing the right thing by Cardi. So, um, congratulations to Cardi and Offset. <coughs> Excuse me, y'all. Next up, my girl, her performed. You guys, I absolutely 100%. <coughs> Damn. I love her. So, her performed a song called We Made It. Love it. Especially when she came down with those drums. She was beating on the drums. I'm like, yes, her. You better do it. You better fuck it up. Do it. So she was playing the drums and then the guitar. I was like, oh, I just love when she plays the guitar. Like, um, one of my friends, I was because I listened to that song, um, Gotta Move On by Tony Braxton, and it's featuring her. And one of my friends was like, Where is her at on this song? I'm like, that's her. If you listen to it, the guitar, that's her. She's playing, she's stringing the guitar. And if you watch the video, you'll see when that big rip comes up, she's playing it. Her making me, her makes me want to get back into my music heavily. Like I want to, like I've told you, excuse me again for burping in your face. I just got finished eating, so my bad, y'all. So I've told you guys before. I know how to play two, what, three instruments. I know how to play the alto saxophone, the clarinet, the B flat clarinet. I semi know how to play the piano just a little bit, but not, I'm not that great at it. So I want to go. Back. I want to find someone that can teach me how to play the piano and the bass guitar. If I can learn those two instruments, I would be so happy. So then next up was Moneybag Yo. He performed Time Today. I like this stage. I like this stage. I'm going to have to go back and listen to the song and actually probably re-watch his performance. It wasn't a bad performance. It just was like, okay, I got to listen. I, I don't really know too much stuff from Moneybag Yo. And I think that might be what it is for me. I just don't know Moneybag Yo's music. So I'll have to go listen to it. So then next up we had the baby came out, right? The baby performed um Ball Till I My bad you guys, my watch. I didn't say anything to this damn thing, but she always somehow comes up. Y'all know who I'm talking about. I can't say her name because she'll think I'm talking to her. So the, the baby performed Ball Till I Fall. Um The Baby. That performance wasn't the best to me. Actually, to be honest with you guys, 
I stopped paying attention to it. I, it. It has nothing to do with him. I just really wasn't paying attention. And I think what it was for me with the baby was that stage was so damn busy. That stage was busy. It was so much stuff going on on his stage. I was just like, what the hell is this? Like, it was just, it was a cluster. It was a cluster fuck of shit. Like, I didn't understand it. So then, after the baby performed, was my girl Megan Thee Stallion with that shit. Look. You know, I guys, I listened. I just listened to that song last Friday when I was out to eat and I was watching the video. I'm like, oh, she did that. I love that song. Love it. Is it raining? Oh God, look like the rain is coming back through. Um, so yeah, love that song. Thought shit. We gonna talk about making them just a little bit when she accepted her first, the first award that she got. Got a little issue with her team and whoever else was behind that. So then next up, we had Tyler, the creator. He performed Lumberjack. That was my first time ever hearing a Tyler, creator, Tyler the Creator song. That was my first time ever seeing a Tyler, the, the Creator performance. It was okay. It was good. I would, I would give it a, another listen. Now here, for me, is the best performance of the night. Jasmine Sullivan. Now this is the song I was just talking about a minute ago where I was trying to get it on um on Shazam, but they said they couldn't tell me what song it was, and I think it was just because when she was singing it, it didn't sound like she was singing it to the microphone. But the song was but we had she had Auntie Maxine out there. And I had to tweet about it. I had to ask what was the name of the first song that she sang. Because to this day I still have not listened to Hotels. So I I have not listened to Hotels. I'm gonna go listen, I'm gonna go and check out Hotels and see what the album is hidden for. I just actually know that singer that she released off of Hotels. So she did that song, Tragic. And then she did Own It with Ari Lennox. Baby! When I heard that song, I, my cousin came in the room, in the living room where I was. It's like, oh, that's my shit. I'm like, I ain't even, I'm like, I have never heard this song. And she was singing the word, and she's like, wait a minute. They skipped the verse. So I don't know, you guys, but she was listening to it. And I'm like, wait a minute. Did they, did they just say spit on it? Oh, <laughs> Yeah, you guys, I'm going to have to go listen to, um, to Hotels. So then after Jasmine Sullivan, we got Roddy Rich, And Roddy Rich performed late at night. Honestly, I don't remember Roddy Rich's performance, to be quite honest with you. No shade to Roddy Rich, I just don't remember the performance. Then next up, we got Lil Nas X. So Lil Nas X, what is the name of that song? Montero? Mon- whatever. Y'all know the song, the one that caused so much controversy from people about him. You know, dancing on Satan, sliding down a stripper pole, dancing on Satan. So, I was looking at the performance. I'm like, ooh, because you guys know he did that performance on SNL um, for the season finale of SNL. And on SNL, he got on the pole, his pants ripped on live television. So, I was like, uh oh, let's hope Lil Nas X's pants don't rip on television again. But he, he had on like a Pharaoh outfit. And he did pay a little tribute to Michael Jackson. So, shout out to that. And then when he ended that performance, making out with that guy, I was like, oh, y'all finna be upset at this little boy, this young, not young little boy, this young man. But I mean, he's living his life. He's doing him. And people are always talking about this gay agenda. What gay agenda, you guys? I really want somebody just to explain to me that. What is the gay agenda that you guys talk about so much? Like, I, I just don't understand it. But hey, if you didn't like it, you didn't like it, but. The whole gay agenda thing now is starting to rain, you guys. So you guys will probably hear the rain hitting my car. All right. So next up, we got Silk Sonic with Leave the Door Open. Silk Sonic. I'm ready for the album. Give me the album. That's what I need now is just give me the album and a tour and we're going to be good. So then next up was the City Girls and they performed Twerker Later. When it comes to the City Girls, I love the City Girls. I will say that. Love the City Girls. It's just their stage presence. It's better than Migos. You know what? I'm not even going to go in on City Girls. Because they, they do a good job. They're not the best dancers around. But for the City Girls, they definitely put on a show for you. So I would give that to the City Girls. So I'm not going to go into it with them. I'm, I'm not going to go into that. Then the last performance that we have is Andre Day. And she came out and she did Strange Fruit. Um, nothing. More, she, I think she did. A, she did a different spin on Strange Fruit in this in this rendition. 
I think is actually the rendition that she did when she performed at the Grammy Awards. Correct me if I'm wrong. But that's it for the performances. Next, we're going to go into the um, awards that were presented last night. All right, you guys. So, how many awards did they give out last night? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twelve. Twelve awards. Thirteen if you count the Lifetime Achievement Award, but twelve awards where people were nominated for them. So, the first award we had was for Best Actress. And that award went to Andre Day for her performance as um, Billie Holiday in the people versus the people versus um, Billy Holiday. I forget. I don't watch it, and I forgot the name of it was. So then the next one up was best group. Now for best group, they named so many people that I was like, when did they become a group? Like Chris Brown and somebody else. It was just like, damn, did y'all have no choices when it came to group? But suffice it to say, the best group was Silk Sonic. They won that. Then best new artist. I have no idea who the best new artist was. His name is Giveon or something like that. G I V E O N. Don't know who that young man is or young. I don't know who that person is. So then they also had another award, which was called a Shine a Light Award. And this award was presented to um, her name is Darnella, and Darnella is a young lady that recorded. You know, um, um, what's his name? What's his, what is his name? Derek Chauvin, when he was, you know, kneeling on George Floyd's neck for that time period. So the Shine a Light Award was presented to her. So then the best um, female and R&B pop artist that was present that was, um, you know, given to her. And then for video of the year, um, Cardi B and Meg won for WAP. This is where I had the issue. So Cardi didn't come out with Meg to get the award. So it was just Cardi by, I mean, it was just Meg by herself. <clears throat> and this was after Meg's performance, right? So Meg came out there with her dress on. Her dress was beautiful. She looked beautiful. But when Meg started talking to open her mouth, I was like, wait a minute. What the hell is that on her teeth? And I was like, oh, crap. Because she, she said that they rushed her out there. I'm like, y'all rushed her out there? And y'all didn't tell this woman that she had lipstick all over her teeth? I mean, it was just lipstick all over her teeth. I'm like, that's real effed up. So then the next, um, we have Best Female Hip Hop Artist. That went to Megan Thee Stallion. And then the next award was Best Her Award. I don't really know what that meant, but whatever. But that went to SZA. I still don't understand what Best Her Award was. <coughs> so then the next is the Best Male Hip Hop Artist. And that went to Lil Baby. And then the next award that we have is the best international act, and that went to Burna Boy. It seemed like for the last few years, Burna Boy has been winning that award. But hey, congratulations to Burna Boy. And then the last award before we get to the Lifetime Achievement Award is the Viewer's Choice Award, which was pres um, which um, Megan won that one. What video? Is oh, she won that video. She won that for um, Savage Remix with Beyonce. All right, you guys, so that's it for the awards. So now we're going to talk about the Lifetime Achievement Award, and we're going to talk about the tribute to uh, DMX. All right, you guys, so for the Lifetime Achievement Award, this year it was presented to Queen Latifah, a.k.a. Dana Owens. And when you think about Queen Latifah and all that she has done in her lifetime, and, you know, in her, her, her um, time... In the industry, she's been a force to be reckoned with, and you can't take that away from her. Like, you, you gotta love Queen. Queen has done so much. She started out as a rapper. Then she went on to, you know, she made her, her, her uh, flavor works. She did Living Single, which was a bona fide hit. Like, everybody loves Living Single, which I believe Living Single currently is on Hulu. She did Living Single. So then after Living Single, she's went on to do her acting, set it off. Um, Chicago, what's that? Is that the name of that? I believe that's it. Like, she's done so much. She sings. She she sings. She, she acts. She sings. She raps. 
She's had her own television show. Now, I didn't know until somebody said recently that she's had two TV shows. I do remember the one on BET. And I do remember, she, oh, she did have two TV shows. She did. I didn't even realize that. But yeah, when it comes to the likes of Queen Latifah, man, you can't do nothing but pay respect to that woman because the, the woman, like, she's done so much. And, you know, she's only, I mean, she's, and she's getting better with time because I know she has this show now, The Equalizer, and I think it's doing good. Like, you, I mean, you, you just got to pay respect to the legend that is Queen Latifah. So, you know, we did, we had the performance, you know, where people pay tribute to her. So, um, we had Moni Love and we had Rhapsody. They came out and they did, ooh, ladies first. Love that. Then Lil' Kim and um, MC Light. They did UNITY. Lil' Kim's face. I love Kim, but girl, I really wish you hadn't done so much plastic surgery to your face, but this is not about Lil' Kim. Speaking of Lil' Kim, I know on the red carpet, somebody asked her who would she like to do a versus with, and she said Nicki Minaj. I was thoroughly surprised that she said Nicki because we all know that she and Nicki had a look, they had, they have had their beef. <clears throat> I was really shocked that she said Nicki Minaj. Really surprised. But yeah, they did an amazing, you know, they did a good job tributing uh, Queen Latifah. Then she got up there, she gave her speech, loved her speech. <coughs> I was kind of confused because she kept shouting out to this one, these two people. And then at the end of it, she said, happy pride. I was like, um, Queen Latifah, did you just come out the closet to us? Because y'all know people speculated for years that she's my, she's, you know, she's a lesbian. There go the rain. It started, it stopped, and now it's starting again. So yeah, y'all might hear that throughout the video. The next few videos, y'all probably gonna hear some rain. But yeah, that was it for the um, you know, the Lifetime Achievement Award. And then let's just wrap this video up and let us talk about the tribute to DMX. Method start Method Man, he started it, he did a good job. Then you better get the hell away from my car. So Method Man, Michael K. Williams. If there is ever a biopic for Method Man, that's who y'all need to get to play him. That is who y'all need to get, hands down. But I actually, I absolutely did love the um, I love the uh, the tribute to DMX. Amazing. The the simulcast. Why does this? I mean, BT award simulcast is always the longest. I looked up, it was 10.30 at night. I'm like, oh, damn. Jesus. I think last year was the only year that it, I think last year was the one year that it ended right on time. And I think that was because it was virtual and everybody had sent in their, had sent in their performances. So they just had to edit the stuff. But yeah, that, you guys, that was the BET Awards. I enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys thought about it. Let me know what you guys thought about Taraji as the host. Let me know which performances you guys liked. And with the awards, did you guys think that the, you know, the right person won those awards? So we'll discuss it in the comment section below. So to the next one, you guys, stay safe out there. Take care of yourselves. Wash your hands. Wear your mask or not. Stay safe. Be blessed. And try to keep social distancing. I realize people are not doing it these days anymore. But I'll see you guys in the next one, you guys. Bye.